Hi guys, Jeremy and Green back to you. Second episode training. All right, we're looking at WebEx Teams this time. We're taking a deep dive in and not just how to use that application on your laptop and on your mobile device, but also using the room kits that you've got in your office. That's the right. nice thing is, is, I did all the work with the Yeti Capital video, so this one's all over right. green. Yeah, right. That was fun, guys, but I really hope you enjoyed the next turn. Remedy back to yet again with another training session. We will focus today on Cisco family products. Mainly, the free WebEx Teams application available for all of you to download. The features that you get with the free application. The limitations of the free application versus the full license. The power of using this tool as a main collaboration platform internally and externally in the future, as well as using this tool in conjunction with the Cisco Room Kits we've deployed in most branches across Canada. In future sessions, we will cover the advantages and added features you get with the full license, which should be around the corner for most of you. It is very important for you to understand how to use this tool not only because it will be our main collaboration platform internally, but also for the sales folks watching this video, this is a product that's available for you to sell. So you need to understand the value it brings to you because that's what you will be able to easily relay to your prospects and customers. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, everyone. Today, we want to take you through a brand new collaboration tool that you can start using as of today, if you haven't already. First, I would like to ask you to open your browser to perform a Google search. Type Cisco WebEx Teams download. Typically, the link you're looking for is at the top three searches. Here's the one you really want to go for. It will redirect you to a WebEx team page. You will notice two options, Cisco WebEx Teams and Cisco WebEx Meetings. Please make sure to download the Cisco WebEx Team app. And just remember, it's the more colorful of the two. Once you download the application, you will need to create an account with your Conic and Minolta email address. Follow the steps, and you should be all set. Make sure to always access your account via the application and not to log in via a web browser, or you will have issues connecting to the Cisco Room Kits. You can also download the same application onto your phone or your smartphones, which will be very useful to you as well. So I will start with a quick overview. Starting with the top left-hand corner, you will see four different icons. The first is your homepage, which displays your most recent activities, whether with groups, or individuals, including active calls, as you see right here. That displays the time and number of participants and who are the participants in the call. The second icon is Teams, or you could also think of it as Groups. Any active user can either create or be added to a group. You might have already guessed it, but this is your collaboration platform. We will take a deeper dive into this module later to ensure everybody understands its full potential. The third icon is calls, which displays your most recent call or video call, whether with groups or individuals, and even the missed calls. It is very similar, if not identical, to what you're used to seeing in your smartphones. The fourth icon is Calendar, 
we will not be spending too much time on this module today, as its real utility is revealed with the full license, which will allow you not to only synchronize with your Outlook, but also schedule outbound webinars. Although we used the PC view for today's training, as you can see, the smartphone application offers the same features and a very similar layout, making it extremely user-friendly. Quick note for all the attendees. I highly recommend you stay signed in to both your smartphone and PC application accounts at all times. This will allow you to get live activity, and in the case where both are in use, to select either of the two devices when receiving a call or request for a webinar. Let's go back and explore these modules. Starting with the home page. As you can see here, your home page offers shortcuts to looking people or groups up within your directory, allowing you to add them to your active contact list. When trying to add a contact and not being able to find that individual by simply clicking their name, you might need to use their email address for a more accurate selection. The good news is a simple message or any type of activity with a contact ensure they will always be on your list of contacts moving forward. Below the search box, you will notice a display of your most recent activity, as mentioned previously. It also displays any active calls within your community and the number of attendees and their names. So for instance, if multiple teams are engaged in calls at the same time, you will literally see the display of the different calls that are ongoing for you to select, if you wish, any to partake in. At the bottom of the page, you will notice a connect to a device tab. This is to have you mirror your laptop or smartphone onto the TV in your boardrooms when there's a Cisco room kit available rather than plugging in an HDMI cable and having to change the input channel set for the Cisco room kit device. Very important note, folks. If you choose to go the traditional way, which is connecting your laptop to the TV via the HDMI cable, which again will require to change the input channel, please note that the TV will automatically reset back to the input channel program for the Cisco room kits in a few minutes after you've changed it. In other words, the Cisco room kit dominates that TV. So to avoid any disconnects and, or disconnect while presenting to customers or your staffs, just click on this button and select the device within the room kit to mirror your screen on your laptop or smartphone onto that screen. Let's move on to the next module, Teams. Again, the Teams module is the most powerful feature in this application, hence why it's called Teams after the application itself. It is the basis to your collaboration with your teammates, managers, and any group you will be added to. So first, I'd like to show you how to create a team. By clicking on the plus sign, you will be prompted to enter a name for the team. And then, optional, but I always prefer to do it, is to add a brief description about what this team is about. It can be something that will be used permanently, such as 
a branch manager adding members of his team onto it for either a weekly forecast call or an ongoing uh, weekly meeting and communication purposes. Or another example would be when you're working an RFP, a team could be created temporarily for the purpose of the RFP only and obviously have all the information shared, preserved within the team. Technically, it is really what you want it to be. Once the team is created, then you can add the members of this team by simply performing a simple search. And by clicking and selecting these individuals, you simply form the members of this team. Next, within a team, you can create different topics. A general space box will always be created by default. But if the members are the same, and you simply want to create a subspace or another space to tackle a specific topic within this space. As you can see here, the space is called Cisco WebEx Teams Training. And I've created another one called Questions Regarding the Teams Module. Any information that will be shared or collaborated to address this very topic will be preserved within that very team. In other words, instead of having to look back into the conversations you've had, all of them, the conversations you've had to narrow down to the specific topic or question and answer you're looking for, then you can narrow it down within the subspace that you've created. Once these steps are completed, here are the features available to you within each space. You will notice an icon or a selection of buttons on your top right hand corner. By clicking on it, it gives you the features available to you. Starting with the message. Essentially, it's a group chat where you can share files, text, images, emojis, GIFs, and others, as you can see here displayed on the bottom of the page. The second one is call, or simply video call. So it gives you the option, as you can see here, to start a video call using your screen or your laptop screen or obviously your smartphone screen or by selecting more options it can identify what devices or room kits cisco room kits are available to you to connect to if any quick note folks whenever you want to connect to a room kit make sure you're within proximity or the same room of this device for you to be able to see it. And again, do not use the a web browser to connect, but rather the Cisco WebEx team application. Again, as you can see here, you can just use your phone for audio purposes only. The third option here is the whiteboard. A whiteboard is simply a tool that allows a team to express an idea on the fly and have the other members of that team chime in with their ideas. In other words, consider it a group brainstorming tool. The best example of how this uh, application is used, as you guys are aware, Virtual universities and schools are becoming more and more available. This is the tool that professors use to make sure students are engaged 
within the training or the class. So by simply creating your whiteboard and going ahead and putting in your notes, simply this is where people can chime in as well and put in their own feedback onto the page. I'll give you a quick tip here, folks, is whenever you would like to use a whiteboard efficiently, you can be connected at the same time and simultaneously to your Cisco WebEx Teams account onto your laptop, iPhone, an iPad, and any number of devices you wish. Yes, you guessed it. You can use your iPhone or iPad as the platform to use the whiteboard or to take notes or to write on it rather than using your laptop, which often can be annoying unless you have a stylus. And depending on the, um, the, the uh, laptop model you have, if it's touch screen or not. All right, the next option is meetings. This is where you can schedule directly a meeting with the members of the teams while synchronizing with your Outlook. This is also available as part of the free application. And the advantage of this is that once you open up uh, the request to schedule a meeting, it automatically creates, as you will see in two seconds, it would automatically create the invitation and obviously all the members are there the dial information is here all you would need to do in this case is change the time and the place and then send it out pretty neat huh all right people Again, pretty straightforward. It gives you all the attendees, as I'll show you later on, that you've added to the members. Who's attending out of these members to the call, the active call that you've, you've, uh, you've started? Whose phone is muted, who's not, and whose video is active and whose video is inactive? Pretty straightforward. Finally, files. In this space, any file that was shared during a group chat or for a specific topic as we saw for example in here the questions regarding the team modules will be preserved in here indefinitely until somebody physically removes it so think of it as a pro an ongoing project that you're working on and you can preserve all the versions of the document from beginning to end to completion and this way, everybody is aware of the different files, the different versions that were available to uh, the team to work on. Your BSC and ITSC team has been using this as their main collaboration platform for a few months now. And I will use them as an example to showcase the real power of this feature. As you can see here, we have multiple teams open. We have the general box where on a daily basis, or this is for the team by weekly call, we share the information, any documents that were requested within this call or after the call following our bi-weekly call, or simply in a, here we created a subspace, which is essential versus progressive. Essentially, what we did here is we wanted, as a group, decide what solutions we will be focusing on moving forward. The members of the team that you can add and remove at any time. And finally, to show you again how the files are preserved, here are the files within the essential in general, and here are the files that were shared under the general team by weekly call. We also have another team, which is the general box where we communicate ongoing activity, whether fun, 
or not. And yes, often enough, we do communicate and we like to laugh. So we do share exciting and funny stuff going on with us across the country. So moving on to the next module, which is calls. This is a pretty straightforward module. Again, the left side of the page is no different than what is available in any smartphone. So you should be accustomed to seeing the active calls or the calls you've had and the calls you've missed. But also on the right side, you have the dial pad where you can look up, quickly look up people that you're used to calling and engaging with at all time. And then you can select whether you want to do it via your computer or your Cisco room kit or the Cisco room kit available to you within your offices. So when a call is active, here are the features that you have. First, you have a mute button. So if you want to make sure that the call, you have noise around you and you don't want to make sure that not to disturb the call, you go on mute. You have the video option, which activates your camera, as you can see here. And you have two options when the camera is active. You can choose to pin the camera, in other words, you're always seeing what other people are seeing or unpin it and then all of a sudden your image would disappear later on. You also have the share screen button and as you can notice here I'm actively sharing <clears throat> my screen with you guys for the training purposes. And finally, with the advanced applications, you get to do some record the sessions, pause them, and stop them whenever you need. All right, guys, so let's cover the limitations of the free account. So during a video call, if the initiator has a free account, only the first three to log in will be able to be seen while the video conference is active. The remaining participants will be able to see the first three. However, they will have access to audio features only, so call features only. Keep in mind that Cisco is undergoing changes with this application. In other words, some features might be added to the free account. Some features might be might change in the course of the, the 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 course of time. In other words, if you if you notice a change to what I'm telling you today, do not be alarmed or surprised. The second limitation is the inability to send out a link or to somebody outside Khan Minolta or somebody that does not have the WebEx Teams application to partake in a phone, a, a video conference call or a regular conference call. As you can see here, you have something called with the full license, the personal room, which essentially is the full license and it also links you to a Cisco WebEx meeting center which is similar to the Adobe Connect, GoToMeetings, or any other video conferencing application you've experienced in the past. The good news is that with the full license, you get also a full license of Cisco WebEx meetings. The third limitation is the full synchronization with your Outlook account. The full license allows the addition of a booking meeting functionality within your Outlook invite feature. In other words, you would be able to schedule a conference or a video conference call with a simple click within your Outlook without necessarily having to start off your Teams application. All right, guys. In conclusion, as you can see, the free application offers you a lot of the options and features you would use on a daily basis. We need you to familiarize yourselves with the free application ASAP and show us the extent and creativity of how you will be leveraging this tool internally. Your company has invested a great amount of dollars into this. 
as part of the Workplace of the Future initiative. Use it and be proud. Please know that we are actively working to equip you with a great number of free full licenses. We just need to see a great adoption rate to justify the investment. In the next session, we will cover the added functionalities you will get with the full license, which, as you might have already concluded, are the limitations we covered in the previous section. This concludes today's training.